Recording in progress.
Good morning to all our participants, colleagues, guests, and friends who are tuning in via Zoom and to those who are watching with us via YouTube and Facebook. I'm Chrisman Caballero from the Philippine Space Agency Space International Cooperation Division. On behalf of the Department of Foreign Affairs and the Philippine Space Agency, allow me to welcome you to this virtual launch of the ebook compendium of speeches and lectures delivered during the webinar on international space cooperation and the Philippines. Thank you for joining us today. As we begin this event, may we please remind you to our decorum, which you will see on the screen. To formally open our event, may we please call on the Honorable Acting Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Maria Teresa P. Lazaro, to deliver Secretary Teodoro, Laz Teodoro Loxin Jr.'s remarks for this program. I am delivering this speech on behalf of Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Teodoro L. Luxin, Jr. Friends, colleagues in the Department of Foreign Affairs, partners from the Philippine Space Agency, fellow workers in government, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Back in October 2020, I invited you to take part in our first webinar on outer space. A first, not just for the Department of Foreign Affairs, but the entire country. It brought in internationally recognized experts on outer space affairs and law and gave us a glimpse of what issues we should focus on in the near future. Today, we are launching the ebook compendium that encapsulates the speeches and lectures delivered during the webinar, which was attended by no less than 300 participants from all over the world. This compendium, which is being made publicly available for free, is not just for us in the Department of Foreign Affairs or our partners in the Philippine Space Agency. This is for anyone interested in deep space, its governing international legal regime, and their implications to the inhabitants of Earth. While space is not yet an ultimate weapons or travel platform, antecedent space science and technology is relevant to us in the most ordinary settings on communications, climate change management, and weather forecasting, to name a few. The Philippines continues to harness space-based technologies, including the launches of two homegrown CUBE satellites, Maya-3 and Maya-4, to the International Space Station in August this year. These are designed for remote data collection and optical imaging, technologies necessary for the Philippines to conduct agricultural mapping and disaster risk management, among others. They are the first to be designed in the local university setting through our education cooperation with other countries. The increased interest in space activities has generated its attendant legal concerns. Without a true understanding of the legal framework on space activities, our science efforts might go to naught. Science and law must go hand in hand if we want our national space agenda to take off, flourish, and be credible across the community of nations. We already know what needs to be done, understand outer space and relate it to our needs here at home, to pass on that understanding to the government, our policymakers, and implementers, so that we can move forward with our accession to important international treaties on outer space. I am confident that today's event will precisely meet this objective. Allow me to congratulate the women and men whose efforts behind the scenes made this possible and to thank the speakers and lecturers who have generously allowed the publication of their lectures to reach and educate a wider set of audience. I encourage everyone to download this ebook, Compendium. May it widen your horizon on the endless possibilities of space and encourage you to take part in our country's endeavors in outer space now and in the future. Thank you.
Thank you, Acting Secretary Lazaro. Indeed, the Philippines has a lot to look forward to in this challenging field of space science and international law. To formally introduce to us the publication, we have the pleasure to invite you on screen, the brainchild behind International Space Cooperation webinar, Assistant Secretary Igor Bailen from the Office of Treaties and Legal Affairs. OTLA is one of the main organizers of this event and the movers behind this compendium. Asik Bailen, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Kritzman, and uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you to Acting Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Maria Teresa Lazaro, speaking on behalf of Secretary Chidoro Luxin Jr. To Director General Joel Joseph Marciano and the team from the Philippine Space Agency, good morning and mabuhay. And thank you for this partnership and cooperation that we in DFA continue to nurture to greater heights. Um, our colleagues uh, from the Office of Treaties and Legal Affairs and the UN, United Nations, and other international organizations are very excited for this partnership uh, for us uh, to be able to um, sort of leave our concerns here on the Earth, planet Earth, and um, do some, some important work also um, in, in outer space. Before I go further, let me please acknowledge uh, those uh, um, people who are uh, without whom uh, the uh, space webinar in 2 October to 2020 last would not have been possible and they are here. Uh, from Georgetown University in Washington, Professor Emeritus David Koplov. Uh, good evening in Washington, uh, sir. Professor Stephen Freeland from Western uh, Sydney University down under. And uh, our colleague, uh, Consul Joylene Santos, now in Singapore PE who was instrumental in uh, moving uh, this webinar along last year. And of course, our colleague from the Office of Treaties and Legal Affairs who's now uh, in our Philippine mission to the ASEAN in Jakarta, Attorney Melissa Telan, uh, who was um, uh, largely responsible also for doing the nitty gritty of this uh, space uh, cooperation webinar last year. Today's event is a culmination of a groundbreaking initiative that we held last year. And uh, for those of you who were not able to attend it, uh, if you were not lucky enough to be part of the 300, that event last year, the DFA and uh, the Philippine Space Agency held the very first international space cooperation in the Philippines webinar. It drew expert speakers and yes, over 300 participants from all over the world. Unprecedented, unchartered, exciting and sort of bending space and time, the event we believe needs to be commemorated in print to sustain this new beginning to greater heights, our partnership. And therefore this compendium on the proceedings, the first publicly available book on the Philippine space agenda. I have the great honor of presenting to everyone this compendium, which we hope will be able to assist a critical mass of policymakers, scientists, educators, lawyers, students, and space enthusiasts alike in furthering the Philippine space agenda. The first part of this compendium features the messages of key officials from the Department of Foreign Affairs and the Philippine Space Agency these messages, apart from providing support for the webinar, also contain snippets of our government's efforts in advancing the Philippine space agenda for peaceful uses, both here and abroad. So on the screen are uh, some of the um, uh, messages uh, with uh, DG Marciano and Secretary of Foreign Affairs, such as The second part, of the compendium are the lectures given by our homegrown officials in the Philippines and government who have been involved in various facets of the international space cooperation. And these are articles by um, Mr. Rosel Nino Vicente from Philippine Space Agency, Ms. Joylene Santos, uh, now in Singapore, uh, previously from the UN office here in DFA. The third part 
of the compendium features the lectures of international experts in the space sector. They have generously allowed us to publish their lectures and speeches. And namely, this include Ms. Simonetta Di Pippo and Mr. Niklas Hedman of the UN Office uh, for um, uh, Outer Space uh, Activities Cooperation, Professor Kazuko Suzuki from Tokyo University, Todai, Professor David Kotlov from Georgetown University, and Professor Stephen Freeland from Western Sydney University and Bond University as well, and Professor Kuo Yu Wang from the Beijing Institute of Technology. Thank you very much, um, professors, ladies and gentlemen, for these expert contributions which form the backbone of this compendium. All of these lectures will not only provide the reader with the overviews, but we'll also pose some important questions that we must consider as we complete our accession process to some or all of its UN space treaties. It will also help us determine important principles which we need to adopt as we develop a more robust domestic legal framework to support the Philippine space industry. The last part of the compendium includes reference materials mentioned throughout this ebook, including the text of the Declaration of Legal Principles governing the activities of space in the exploration and use of outer space, the Outer Space Treaty, the Rescue Agreement, the Liability Convention, the Registration Convention, the Moon Agreement, and our very own domestic law of the, from the Philippines, Republic Act number 11363, or the Philippine Space Act, which created the Philippine Space Agency. Long overdue, but very much welcome. Thank you very much. And before I conclude my speech, I would, not, I would like to emphasize that not only does this publication document this landmark DFA FILSA initiative, it promises a partnership that has immense potential because the stakeholders for the Philippine space agenda and the global space agenda, they're legion domestically through our various policymakers and space enthusiasts, multilaterally through UNOSA in Vienna and elsewhere, bilaterally and with key strategic key countries and universally with the interest and support of the greater public. As will be shown later, this compendium will be uploaded and made available to the public for free. We hope that this publication, we may, we may be able to go farther in space and that we may find more solutions to improve our lives here on Earth and to preserve it for generations beyond. On a personal note, as some of you may know, I shall be leaving soon to become the Philippines ambassador to the Russian Federation. And it is my intention and mandate to explore and further space cooperation activities bilaterally between the Philippine Space Agency and Roscosmos. And I'm very excited to be doing this in partnership with Philippine Space Agency and with the support of the Department of Foreign Affairs. So things are looking up. Congratulations are in order to the DFA fills up partnership and extensive network that this has created. Thank you and good morning to everyone from Manila. Good evening to um, our colleagues from outside the Philippines. Pera Spera Ad Astra. Thank you so much, Asek Bailen. To hear our response from the colleagues and partners, may we invite Director General of the Philippine Space Agency, Dr. Joel Joseph Maria Marciano. DG Marciano, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, please allow me at the outset to extend my greetings to the Department of Foreign Affairs, Secretary Teodoro Loxin, Acting Secretary Maria Teresa P. Lazaro, Assistant Secretary Igor B. G. Bailen. Uh, congratulations, sir, on your upcoming new uh, endeavor. Uh, our distinguished guests, friends, and colleagues from the government, the academe, uh, the budding space science and policy 
Uh, particularly, I acknowledge the following groups from the Department of Foreign Affairs, the Office of Treaties and Legal Affairs, the Office of United Nations and International Organizations, the Office of the Undersecretary for International Economic Relations, and the Philippine Embassy and Mission in Vienna. I thank you for inviting the Philippine Space Agency or FILSA to co-organize this event. I commend the organizing team from the DFA and the FILSA for your excellent work in making this event possible. It's my view that uh, today's launch of the e compendium of speeches and lectures delivered during the webinar on international space cooperation in the Philippines is uh, indeed very timely, not only to commemorate the first ever DFA FILSA webinar on international space cooperation held last October, 2020, but as we are nearing the end of the year, we find this a good opportunity to share with everyone a current progress in space science and technology and applications, or SSTA, as we regularly refer to it, uh, in these past couple of years. Uh, this is what my colleague, Dr. Gay Jane Perez, FILSA Deputy Director General, will speak about in her presentation this morning. I express my uh, sincere congratulations to the DFA for this initiative that led to this compendium, the FILSA, through our Space Policy and International Cooperation Bureau, or SPICB, has been cooperating with DFA on this and we fully support its publication. I wish to emphasize the significance and value of the compendium as uh, it is perhaps the first publicly available, a freely publicly available book on space policy and cooperation in the context of the Philippines efforts and plans in SSTA. Space is a frontier that is certainly full of landmarks for our country. And this is yet another achievement that joins previous milestones, such as the development, launch, and operation of our Diwata microsatellites, the Maya nanosatellites, the training of scientists and engineers, the establishment of relevant ground facilities like the Philippine Earth Data Resource Observation Center, or PEDRO, the signing of the Philippine Space Act, and establishment of the PILSA, etc. Not just another book, I consider it helpful documentation to better understand the United Nations treaties on outer space and the Philippine space policy and our attendant activities. Also the key role of the DFA and PILSA in advancing a formidable Philippine space agenda, as well as the international legal regime governing space activities, which has become a very important matter especially at this time where outer space exploration activities are ramping up, particularly with increasing commercialization and with subsequent new emerging issues in space law. This compendium captures a uh, plethora or wealth of knowledge from leading experts in the field of space law and diplomacy, their insights on the five United Nations treaties on outer space makes this enriching, interesting, and valuable. The space-related legal concepts and dynamics on international relations are, are explained in accessible language, and I recommend this compendium as reading material for students and professionals aspiring to be countries' space law experts. Also as a handy reference for FILSA and our Space Policy and International Cooperation Bureau. In closing, I would like to take this opportunity to share that the agency is now a step forward in ratification of two UN space treaties that are quite relevant to the country now. These are the liability and registration conventions. Uh, the agency recently held a successful multi-stakeholder consultation on the ratification of these two UN treaties, which was attended by a number of government agencies and offices, including members of the Philippine Space Council. We reported this activity to the Philippine Space Council meeting, uh, the fourth meeting, which we held last Tuesday. We're certainly making progress in furthering the development of our national space legislation. And with this, we thank the DFA and our other partners for their valuable support and guidance that they've provided to the FILSA in pushing this ratification initiative forward. The DFA in particular has been a, an important partner in the space policy international cooperation efforts of our young space agency. This compendium is a testament to our agency's excellent working relationship over these past years, and it's a prelude to what our agencies can achieve more together. 
I look forward to succeeding books or compilations born out of our growing collaboration in promoting international cooperation, a collaboration that guides and bridges our national space community to the world, one that uplifts our understanding and appreciation of the many benefits derived from space, and one that empowers our society by developing a vibrant, space-capable, and space-faring nation that adds and creates value in space for and from Filipinos and for the world. Again, magandang umaga po sa lahat. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay. Thank you once again, DG Marciano, for your inspiring message of support. Participants, friends, colleagues, the compendium will now be officially available in the event microsite, which you will see now on your screen. As described by ASIC Bailen and DG Marciano, the compendium is a good resource material for policymakers, members of the academy, and space enthusiasts to further their knowledge on outer space affairs. At this point, may we call on as ASIC Bailen together with DG Marciano and to all our esteemed contributing authors who are present with us today, Mr. Rosel Vicente from Philippine Space Agency. Attorney Mel Tellan, Consul at Philippine Permanent Mission in, to ASEAN. Ms. Joylene Santos, Consul at Philippine Embassy to Singapore. Professor Stephen Freeland from Western Sydney University and Bond University for a quick photo opportunity. May you request them to please turn on their cameras for the photo screen shot. Thank you. All right, one, two, three. Okay, all right, thank you so much. To now give us an update of the movements and achievements of the Philippines in the space sector, we would like to welcome our guest speaker this morning, Dr. Gay Jane Perez, Deputy Director General for Space Science and Technology of the Philippine Space Agency. Prior to her appointment at FILSA, Dr. Perez has also led various programs on satellite development in the Philippines, as well as other projects that utilize satellite and remotely sensed data for environmental applications and climate studies. Without further ado, may I call on Dr. Perez. Thank you, uh, Kritzman. Good morning to everyone. Um, so may I ask uh, my colleague to please share the screen for me? Thank you. Okay, so before I begin, uh, allow me to greet uh, the FA Acting Secretary, Maria Teresa P. Lazaro, Assistant uh, Secretary Igor Bailen, um, our very own uh, Director General, Joe Joseph Marciano. Uh, good morning. So allow me to present uh, to you uh, Value Creation in Space, uh, the Philippines in Action. Space has grown into an ecosystem composed of the upstream and downstream technology and the end users that utilize the services. If you talk about the technology consisting of the infrastructure and operations, that's the upstream, which is responsible for putting satellites in orbit. While the downstream is where the satellite data processing and development of products and services are integrated until it reaches the different stakeholders and end users across various sectors. The downstream bridges the space technology services and the end users. Uh, this is how we can take advantage of the satellite products and relate it with our daily lives. As you all know, we are a mega diverse country 
sitting in the Philippines' ring of fire, which makes it also the fourth, fourth most disaster-prone country with 20 typhoon visits yearly on average. The identification, nurturing, and protection of its natural resources are important concerns for our country, mitigating the high risk of increasing number of casualties and damage to infrastructure and resources from natural disasters is an incessant need. The country needs sustained and effective mechanism for faster turnaround and on-demand sensing and monitoring of its natural and built environments. We need to leverage on satellite technologies to help ensure sustainable use and protection of natural resources and more effective disaster risk management and response. Scientific-based information is very critical to our needs, and we get this with access to satellite data. While we do have access from uh, other agencies, there is value of having sovereign satellites because we can control, with control of this data, we have access to it anytime we want. This is the motivation why we started building satellites. We are entering upstream in the space ecosystem where we are not just getting data, but building satellites too and having access to other technology that may cascade and spin off to other technologies that are not just limited to space. We create value that way as we build our space industry. Now the upstream, upstream sector deals with the scientific and technological foundation of space programs, manufacturing and production of space infrastructure. This includes building satellite components, subsystems, systems, integrating them, or putting them together, testing them, and launching them. Therefore, there is also this area also deals with the development and operation of rockets, spaceports, and related facilities. Now, with the establishment of the Philippine Space Agency in 2019, this signifies a crucial step for our country in building an integrated and sustainable national space program that will serve the country's needs, particularly in the following key development areas, national security and development, space research and development, hazard management and climate studies, space education and awareness, space industry capacity building, and international cooperation. Now, let me highlight the recent successes in both the upstream and the downstream sector, starting with the upstream. Shown here, are the small satellite milestones of the Philippines with its microsatellites Diwata-1 and, Di and Diwata-2 and the nanosatellites starting with Maya-1 and the upcoming larger satellite to date that is now in its development phase. The second Earth observation satellite Diwata-2 is still in operation and is actively taking pictures from space. Our researchers are utilizing these images for different Earth observation applications, which I will present to you later. Around the time Diwata 2 was developed, a one kilogram educational and technology demonstration nanosatellite, Maya 1, was also built by Filipino scholars in Japan. These nanosatellite series are called the Maya nanosatellites, which have reached their third and fourth. We would like to highlight Maya 3 and 4, which is the first batch of the Maya nanosatellites built in the Philippines by our very own Filipino scientists and engineers marking our strength and capacity as a space-capable nation. These latest nanosatellites were deployed from the International Space Station last October 6th this year. Our efforts in building satellites continue. The latest project is the MULA satellite or the multi-spectral unit for land assessment, uh, which is a 100 uh, to 150 kilogram satellite that will be built also for Earth observation. This is distinguished from our previous efforts on building Diwata and Maya, which is based in a university or an academic environment. Whereas this new satellite, satellite is based on an industrial settings um, where um, the focus now is on operational data products uh, to provide services to its end users. Our MUNA satellite would generate valuable data for agriculture, national security, disaster management, and marine applications. In building MULA, we also leapfrog the development of local technology and innovations that would propel our very own space industry. The mission of this next generation satellite 
is intended to meet the country's Earth observation needs. For national security, the satellite can provide situational, situation awareness and uh, aid in assessment and monitoring of national security areas in the rest of the Philippine territory. For agriculture, we can periodically generate updated maps on land use, infrastructure, road networks, and inland water resources. For disaster management, we can monitor and assess disaster events and hazard-prone areas for effective response strategies. And finally, for coastal monitoring and ocean studies, we can generate maps of critical ecosystems and provide high-resolution images for detecting coastal erosions and monitoring of important activities. Well, you've seen our participation in the upstream, which sustains and compounds the benefits from space technology and adds more value as we not only develop the local industry, but also break the vicious cycle of data dependency. Now, I would like to highlight the downstream technology that enables us to develop our own products utilizing space-borne data and space-enabled services. Next slide, please. So first, let me highlight uh, what we can provide using the WATA2 images. So as of uh, November this year, the WATA2 uh, has covered up to around 85% or 255,360 square kilometer of images. So almost covered the entire country. Um, this includes uh, all images um, um, as well as those with um, with clouds, but uh, had been very useful for various applications, which I will discuss next. So now allow me to share some of the Earth observation applications from Diwata. So here is an example of a land cover classification using Diwata 2 image over Ilocos during 2019 and uh, 2020. As you can see, significant change from vegetation cover to bare soil is observed and is most likely due to seasonal uh, transition from wet to dry season in the region. From land, we move to water. Next slide. So using the Wata 1 images, we monitor important ecosystem. In this case, we highlight uh, Manila Bay. Using the Wata true color images, the turbid areas along the bay are visible from space, as you can see on the left image. Now, most of the high, highly turbid areas are in the mouth of Pasig River and in aquaculture areas in Bulacan. Being able to get this information is important for rehabilitation and management efforts of our coastal areas. Not only can we learn about turbidity in our marine eco coastal environments, but we can also derive it in our fresh water ecosystems too. Here, we focus on Laguna de Bay, uh, the largest area largest lake in the Philippines. This time, we use the Wata 2 multispectral imager to derive a map from uh, the image that looks at turbidity levels in the whole lake, as seen in the left figure. To your right, you can see the on-site turbidity measurements in different stations uh, that validate the data derived from the satellite. The graph is plotted against wind speed that uh, can drive the turbidity levels at the surface of the lake. So you see here that the decrease in uh, turbidity is associated with lower wind speed. With these two types of data complementing each other, we can generate more reliable information and reduce the uncertainty um, of our decision, our uncertainty, so decisions can be more effective. Next slide. We also use Diwata to monitor geological hazards like volcanic eruption. A series of volcanic activities that began in January uh, 2018 made the Mayon volcano a, highly priority, a high priority target for the Wata 1. Within two weeks of continuous volcanic activity, Mayon was successfully, uh, an image of Mayon was successfully captured using the Wata's uh, middle field camera on January 30, 2018. The image shown here includes a portion of Albay where the volcanic plumes uh, coming from Mayon Volcano vividly depicted as a bright white streak near the center of the image. Wind simulations show that the wind direction in the area during the acquisition time 
was coming from the northeast. This coincides with the observed dispersion of plumes relative to the volcano. And if you can remember uh, that the Al eruption that just happened last year, the Stamina First Base team captured this Diwata 2 image of the volcano in January 6, a few days before the eruption. And 16 days after, uh, Diwata 2 was also able to capture um, another set of images um, on January 27. To detect changes, it was compared to the pre-eruption image. The image on the top right shows the pre-eruption, while the bottom uh, right uh, shows um, the areas that are still covered by ash, um, as seen from the January 27 image. Next slide, please. We were also able to demonstrate how we can detect burnt areas using finer resolution uh, images from Diwata. So this up close image of the affected areas shows um, the, near, the nearby river system and a few built up areas, which are important information for emergency responses and uh, prioritization uh, of these uh, target areas. Next slide. Now, aside from developing applications uh, from the WATA satellite, uh, the FILSA also contributes satellite images to various security and defense um, agencies to aid in the monitoring of our mar maritime domain. FILSA provides almost daily information about the presence of ships in the West Philippine Sea through the National uh, Security Council, which in turn disseminates this information to various um, groups. Now, the image on the left uh, shows the presence of ships in Union Banks on September 20, uh, using optical satellite images obtained and processed by FILSA personnel, whereas the image on the right shows the presence of ships in Mischief Reef on July 28, using radar satellite images. Next slide. We also conduct environmental studies in the West Philippine Sea using multi-sensor multi data. Uh, using these satellite images, we can um, conduct comprehensive analysis and monitoring of maritime and coastal ecosystems and their potential degradation. With medium resolution data, we generate benthic maps of the West Philippine Sea reefs for uh, inventory and protective measures. We can study the extent and distribution of different fissures along the coast, such as seagrass areas and corals, uh, which are critical for uh, comprehensive assessment of the health of our coastal ecosystem. Aside from that, we also monitor activities in this environment. We use nightlight images to monitor fishing vessels surrounding the reefs. The increased number of vessels may alter the physical chemical properties of water due to uh, discharges of uh, say oil and waste, as well as modify the fauna behavior due to light and noise pollution. The FILSA also participates in the interagency task force on zero hunger. Uh, the FILSA processes satellite images fused with other data in order to generate fish suitability maps of, at a countrywide scale, including municipal waters. This is in coordination with the Department of uh, Agriculture, Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, and the National Fisheries Research and Development Institutes. These maps are being improved using ground and satellite data to help uh, identify current and potential fishing zone. This space data information can be translated to actionable items for fisheries management in this case, stakeholders are equipped with data-driven and evidence-based tools to guide them in their decision-making, such as where to fish, when to fish, and how to regulate the activities inside and outside municipal waters. Moreover, we also use satellite data to monitor changes in our uh, environment, like in this case, um, the, rehabil the rehabilitation initiative of Manila Bay. Here, we use a uh, high-resolution Image, image from Planet Scope to assess the expansion of the dolomite sand in a small portion of the bay. Uh, These images captured in October 13, November 13 last year, and August 13 and October 10 this year were obtained from Pedro Center. To delineate, to delineate the shoreline, uh, in, the near infrared images was, were converted to binary maps using threshold value. The boundary was then traced from a binary image to get the area of reclaimed beach. 
So we derived um, what we call the normalized difference wetness index to better visualize the extent of the beach. Now, overall, we can see the apparent southeast drift or shift of the white dolomite, which is uh, probably the result of a combination of longshore drift and from the development of the project. There is still a need to validate the aerial extent estimate from satellite images and quantify the change in volume of the dolomite using other complementary methods such as uh, drone imaging and uh, videos. Let me also highlight another important application that looks at changes in the environment and human activities. Here we use satellite images to detect volcanic debris in this case uh, we detect pumice rafts from space. Specifically, you can see a wide-scale pumice detection in between Batan and Saptang in Batanes. This was anticipated after a series of submarine uh, eruptions of Fokutoku Okonaba volcano uh, in Japan, which produced volcanic debris that were washed, uh, that started washing up along the coastlines of several uh, Japanese islands. In October, in November 23, the FILSA joined ASTI and FIVOX in investigating um, these images and showing and to show and identify the transported volcanic debris. Aside from that, we also provide important visualizations to show how much has changed in critical uh, cities. So you see that in the uh, middle image and the rightmost image, you seeing the long historical uh, data of several spanning several decades now. We can see changes in land cover from increasing human activities and urbanization. On the rightmost image, we can also uh, we also see um, you, um, human activities as reflected by um, traffic. Here, images show East Avenue uh, corner Edsa. For those who are uh, in Manila, you may be familiar with this area. We can see the stark difference in vehicular activities in the two images, especially that in the 2020 image, uh, where, which was taken just two days after uh, the imposition of a uh, lockdown. And uh, next image, four days uh, after the alert level two was declared. Finally, we also have the COVID-19 space, space Data Dashboard, which is a joint effort of the FILSA, TOSD asti and the Stamina for Space Program. The dashboard uh, provides a window to the application of satellite-derived data, such as ship traffic, air quality, water quality, monitoring, and nightlights, in understanding the impact of COVID-19 to our natural and built environment. The dashboard highlights the current capability, the utilization of space data, and its usefulness in supporting subsequent uh, policymaking and formulation. Now, behind the success of our SSDA programs are, of course, our people. And so to ensure and sustain a thriving space ecosystem, we also aim to build a knowledge workforce, as well as raise awareness and appreciation across large audiences. Here, I will highlight some notable engagements in space education and awareness over the past year. First, I would like to mention uh, the, the recently concluded uh, Galileo Hackathon, which is last November. This event is an ideation hackathon focusing on the utilization of Galileo, the European Global Navigational Satellite System, to solve problems in the emergency and maritime applications, environmental challenges, and tourism. There are three locations as seen here, including the Philippines, of which FILSA is the local organizer. There were 236 participants or hackers from 10 countries. Of the, out of this, 129 are from the Philippines, having the most number of participants. Winners are as follows, with Project Saklolo taking the first place, uh, which focuses on a GNSS leveraging device with emergency power system for survivor geopositioning during maritime and natural disaster. The second laser is the position inspector and sensor dependent fishing assistant focuses on a low cost smart fish farming app using buoy mounted sensors. And third, a laser, I am safe, 
looks at a system that used GNSS data to give a real uh, assessment and warning in the effect of sudden flooding. We've also had far-reaching engagements uh, this year with the thousands of participants from space science community, the academe, and the general public attending our virtual public webinars, Scientist to Scientist Exchanges and Career Talks. In particular, I would like to note the success of our World Space Week celebration last October, themed Women in Space. Through a week-long lineup of events, we targeted meaningful public engagement activities to increase the visibility of notable women in the space sector, highlighted their important uh, contribution in SSTA, and connected them to young professionals and students who are aspiring to be part of this exciting field. The increased representation of women in the space sector, as well as improved gender equality and inclusivity, would positively impact our nation in innovation efforts. The younger generation, with the support of their parents, also responded to our call. We launched the Ask an Astronaut uh, video series this year, featuring astronauts from JAXA, answering questions from Filipino kids, so the first installment of this video uh, series garnered a total um, reach, a social media reach of over 10,000 and engagement of almost uh, 700. Okay, next slide, please. Now in building a knowledge workforce, a key initiative of FILSA is the Phil Ad Astra Scholarship Program, which stands for FILSA Advanced Degrees for Accelerating Strategic Space R&D and Applications. This was established to provide opportunities for Filipinos to pursue uh, postgraduate studies in space science, technology, and uh, applications and related fields. In October 2021, FILSA awarded the first uh, scholar, uh, scholarship. This is to a Filipino researcher pursuing Copernicus Master in Digital Earth with specialization in geodata science track at Paris Lodron University of Salzburg and University of South Britain. Now that we have launched this program, we expect more applications, although we expect it to be even more competitive uh, with the current budget constraints. The FILSA also recognizes that international cooperation is an important driving force in the field of space, science, and technology applications. Since 2019, the FILSA has been representing the country in various international fora in the field of SSTA, with a view to further our capacities in space technology and promote the interests of the Philippines in outer space frontiers. FILSA is very much pleased to have recently participated in the world's largest space congress, the International Aeronautical Congress held in Dubai last October 2021, where our delegation had the opportunity to hold in-person bilateral meetings with several foreign counterparts space agency, including uh, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, UAE Space Agency, and the European Space Agency. Last December 3, we held a multi-stakeholder consultation on the ratification of the liability and registration conventions, and it was attended by representatives from various government organizations, agencies, and offices. The consultation was held to seek insights from re relevant um, groups regarding the ratification of the liability and registration convention, which are the two most relevant space treaties to the country at this time. The FILSA also successfully concluded and signed its first two international agreements this year with UNUSA and JAXA. FILSA sees both international organizations as a valuable partner of the agency in furthering its capacity building initiatives and efforts to utilize and promote space science and technology applications to attain sustainable development. FILSA is also pleased to inform everyone of its ongoing bilateral talks with other partners such as uh, in the Asia Pacific, Middle East and African regions and Europe for possible cooperation in the field of space science and technology. On this note, allow me to express our appreciation to the Department of Foreign Affairs, whose support and guidance has become indispensable in the agency's international cooperation efforts. Now, I would like to highlight some of the uh, activities that are brought about by these partnerships. So first, uh, our partnership with JAXA 
continues uh, with the utilization of ALOS2 data, which can be used for applications such as monitoring land substance, especially in critical uh, residential areas. We leverage this initiative from the OSDS's efforts, and we are now looking forward to other uh, potential applications of ALOS2 data. The FILSA engages with UN NUSA, especially through the UN SPIDER initiatives, which will help the Philippines in mitigating disaster impacts through timely satellite data. Recently, uh, with uh, our Memorandum of Understanding uh, Agreement, it will allow us to enhance our use of space-based information for disaster risk reduction and emergency response. The FILSA is also a uh, planning to formally join as a signatory of the Space Climate Observatory. With this engagement, the FILSA seeks to enhance meteorological applications of satellite data in the country and promote exchange of technical know-how and open data sharing on climate information. Next, uh, through the Asia-Pacific Regional Space Agency Forum, or APRSAF, we also actively participate in activities promoting the sharing of best practices, such as through the SAFE initiative, which strengthens both our existing and future collaboration on environmental monitoring on both local and global scales. In addition, with our recent membership in Kibo ABC, we are confident that this will boost our country's space research and education development and further enhance our capability to contribute to the collaborative activities of its members. The FILSA is also partnering with UNSCAP and South Korea National Institute of Environmental Research to combine the ground-based air quality monitoring and satellite observations through the Pan-Asia pa Partnership for Geospatial Air Pollution Information, or PAPGAP. This will be in collaboration with the OSTP Shared, ASTI, and PNRI, and DNR's Environmental Management Bureau, and NAMUYA. Finally, the FILSA is looking forward to future programs uh, to further maximize satellite uh, data use to address climate change impacts and uh, monitoring of our environment. Now, through the National Copernicus Capacity Support Action Program for the Philippines or COPFIL, uh, we make readily, we'll make readily available satellite products for the different environmental applications accessible through Copernicus Open Access Mirror site which can provide different uh, sentinel data that are essential to monitoring air quality, uh, water quality, and other important indicators of the changing environment. Now in closing, let me once again share with you the FILSA's vision and mission. At FILSA, we envision a nation bridged, uplifted, and empowered through the peaceful uses of outer space. We aim to promote and sustain a robust Philippine space ecosystem that adds and creates value in space for and from Filipinos and for the world. Thank you and a pleasant day to all. Thank you so much, Deputy Director General Perez, for that insightful presentation. And now let us hear from one of our esteemed authors for, for his remarks, Professor Stephen Freeland from the Western Sydney University and Bond University. Professor Stephen. Thank you so much. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, forgive my background. This is a uh, cafe in uh, in Leiden where um, I host a, a podcast talking about space with uh, people from around the world and we sit in virtual cafes. Um, and uh, we had one recently in, uh, in this cafe, which is quite historic in Leiden. Um, I hope to uh, include and invite uh, distinguished colleagues from the Philippines to join these podcasts as well, and uh, that would be wonderful. So, Excellencies, um, Agency Head, uh, distinguished uh, uh, government officials from the Department of Foreign Affairs, from the Philippine Space Agency and other agencies, um, I just wanted to say on behalf of myself, and I'm sure I can speak for all of the colleagues who also participated in the um, webinar of last year, what a pleasure it was, uh, what a delight it is to meet all of you, um, how uh, inspiring it is to hear about the great progress 
that the Philippines is making in its uh, endeavours in space. Congratulations, of course, on your recent success with the, uh, the Maya 3 and 4 CubeSats. Uh, that's uh, just um, a foretelling of uh, great successes to come. It's also um, very heartening to hear about the progress that the Philippines is making towards the ratification of important United Nations space treaties. Um, it's important, um, as I think all of the colleagues and myself emphasized during the webinar, it's important to recognize the rule of law, the importance of law, the way that uh, international space law and the guidelines that are being implemented direct us all to responsible behavior, direct us all towards the peaceful exploration and use of space. And it's just wonderful to hear that the Philippines is also committed to those goals. Um, and I really look forward to um, working with you, working with all the colleagues in the Philippines to allow the Philippines to express its important voice as a member of the international community, as a successful member of the international space community at all of the multilateral forum, particularly at the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, where I have the honor of co-chairing the working group on space resources. Um, it's important that all the voices, every country has the opportunity to participate, to give its views, to learn from others, to cooperate and collaborate in space. And um, everything I see and hear about the wonderful work and the progress being made in the Philippines um, seems all completely directed towards those goals. So let me um, end by congratulating you all again um, for the successful webinar, for the launch of this book, um, I sincerely hope that I can assist you in any way. And of course, I look forward to the opportunity of visiting your wonderful country again, um, to talk to you, to work with you and work with others within the Philippines community as we all move forward in our uh, understanding and interest in the wonders of space and space law. So congratulations again. Um, I shall look forward again to reading the compendium and I commend it all to everybody in the audience and hope that it will be widely circulated to demonstrate the Philippines commitment to international cooperation. Um, and I wish you every success in your endeavors and look forward to working with you. So thank you for the opportunity to make these off the cuff remarks. I was not aware that I would have the opportunity to speak. Um, but it is a pleasure. It's a pleasure to hear from all of you. And I wish you well from Australia. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Freeland, for your immense generosity and contribution to make this project possible. Before we end our virtual ebook launching, uh, I would like to invite once again uh, ASEC Thailand, DG Marciano, and our esteemed. Uh, contributors, because we had uh, encountered uh, minor technical uh, problems earlier when once uh, of our, some of our participants were not able to uh, be captured in the uh, screenshot. So of course, uh, Mr. Rochelle Vicente from Philippine Space Agency, Attorney Mel Tellan, Consul at the Philippine Permanent Mission to ASEAN, Ms. Joylene Santos, Consul at the uh, Philippine Embassy in Singapore, and Professor Stephen Freeland from Western Sydney University and Bonn University. Our technical team, please. As I count uh, three to one, um, please uh, highlight our esteemed uh, speakers and contributors. Three, two, one. All right, perfect. Uh, please stay, as I also would like to invite our uh, partners and colleagues at the DFA Office of Treaties and Legal Affairs, Division Three, and uh, our uh, colleagues at the Philippine Space Agency to join the photo opportunity.
Right, our technical team, as I count three, two, one, please ready. Three, two, one. All right, perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. On behalf of the Department of Foreign Affairs and the Philippine Space Agency, once again, thank you to our STEAM speakers and of course to our participants who have joined this morning. Please do not forget to accomplish our feedback form, which is will be basically um, flashed on your screen to get your certificate of participation. The links and QR codes are now flashed on your screen. All right. Thank you. This has been Crisman Caballero from the Philippine Space Agency. On behalf of the Department of Foreign Affairs in the Philippine Space Agency, we hope to see you all in our future webinars. Take care and good, good morning. Recording stopped.